If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this sentimental episode <laughs> Hold me. of Mind Pump. So we all brought in our high school yearbooks and uh, read through them. Yeah. And uh, had a good time. Yeah, that was uncomfortable. You know, I second. forgot to tease you, Sal, about there was one last one on here that I never said anything to you about, about uh, hanging out back by the trash can. What? <laughs> yeah. Let me see that is, one. Is you Point doing a lot of hanging out yeah. behind the trash can? Yeah, Point? in the 10th grade. I'm going to miss- Is that code for something? Yeah, yeah. All the funny jokes that you guys used to tell and all the good old days where you guys- used Oh, to- that's just the place I hung out. By yeah. the trash can? No, so there was- <laughs> So I had- I yeah, had Sal over there. He hangs out by the trash can. I had, uh, <laughs> <laughs> trash can Sally. That's well Trash can Sally. <laughs> <laughs> Good old trash can Sal over here. <laughs> I had, How you doing? Yeah. He's a, he's a <laughs> drop it can. off over here. I had a uh, <laughs> take care of it. No, my I had an area. I had a literally. Wait, an area I know of it the says you. It says right that, back. That, that was mine, can. dude. That was I, what we I owned. get it. You own that block. <laughs> there happened, you know, that was your space. Like, like, yeah, yeah, be, kid. You can have by the by yeah. the trash can. You uh, can take that little. Hey, <laughs> every piece of garbage you got on the apple cores or whatever. You know, you just throw my way. Yeah. Oh, you just got you got to pay the tax, man. Pay me fifty cents for every piece of garbage <laughs> made a lot of money back there anyway Damn. we get sentimental we talk about high school we talk about i mean this was really an episode about life lessons that we learned it was growing yeah. up i think it stemmed from the, the the yearbooks and then we started talking about high school and then a lot of lessons that uh, we've learned in high school and that we've learned now that probably stem from high school days so it's i mean we talk that. about religion in this uh-huh. uh adam talks about the time he got arrested mm-hmm. yes he does have a record uh <laughs> no, with know, the actually. was it oakdale police you department yeah, yeah. yeah it was the oakdale police department yeah yeah, yeah. yeah he's a little bit of a rebel yeah, I guess so. uh we talked about um just i mean things we learned what things we wish we had learned when we were younger how all this formed, you know, the way we think now and like you know, there is definitely you could see, uh, you know, pieces of us back then, even now, like in what we carried with us. too. So. Yeah. So we hope you enjoy uh, this episode. Also, I do want to remind everybody Maps Anabolic is 50 percent off. It's half off. Holy schnike. For the whole month. That's our staple program. You go to mindpumpmedia.com, enroll in the foundational program, the program that started them all. Maps Anabolic. We also have bundles on there, uh, like our Super Bundles, where we take multiple maps programs and put them together and discount them. And the Super Bundle is a year of exercise programs. So you can find this and everything else that we offer at mindpumpmedia.com. Dude, so yearbooks are not a thing anymore. Yeah, did you hear what Enzo was saying? No. Oh, really? Yeah, dude. He says that's not a that's not a deal anymore. Oh, there's Justin. Well, what uh, what do they do now? Like, how do they? capture those impressionable years just go on your instagram right uh, oh look at that yeah, it's i remember like a timeline that. yeah if the yearbooks were a big deal when we were kids like you got your yearbook everybody got all excited about it that makes sense and then people signed it so that you could feel cool yeah. or whatever like look at all these people that so signed now you just comment real time on the facebook or yeah. instagram yeah so what the audience doesn't know is that we are each holding each other's yearbooks from when we were in high school yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty ridiculous. I got Sal's right now. Yeah. Uh, Dude, I'm looking I at Adams. I'm looking at Justin's and I have there's one multicolored <laughs> several markers. Oh god. Like three so, so embarrassing. three pages of yeah, yeah. a signature. It's like a that your <clears throat> like that an opus. Your ex girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to read one part of it. Just no, one. Dude. No, I'm not going to read the whole Ooh. thing. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm this is read. awkward as fuck. Uh, 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 <laughs> just right, one go, sentence. All right, go just ahead. one sentence. No, no. I, you know, everything is fair game. One sentence. Yeah. Okay. I like your elfy ears and dimples. <laughs> what the fuck? I love your elfy ears and dimples. I don't have elfy ears. <laughs> Let me see your ears. What the hell is she talking about? Let me see your ears. They're... Uh, no, they're good. They're not Alfie. Yeah, maybe <laughs> she's full of shit. That's why I dumped her. No, <laughs> yeah, you stupid bitch. Yeah, take that. Take that, dude. Yeah, yeah. there's uh, this is pretty good. Elfie you know, ears. I reading Sal's you- right. I actually read uh, most of yours, dude. They're great. Like I think you did a really good job describing yourself. Like you've described yourself at like I feel like you give a very good description of who like you are. How? Well, you could tell like you were definitely an, a nice boy. 
Like you were a nice kid. Yeah. You're you working work. out. You yeah, Well, you, I'm not gonna have people sign my yearbook who I wasn't nice to. Well like hey, yeah, hey uh, assholes. Well, so I did. Yeah, if you I say, did. If you look at Justin and mine, yeah, you're yeah. you'll I got a lot of assholes in there, dude. Yeah, yeah but these shit. are these are friends though. Yeah, they're friends, but they're like asshole friends. You could no, but I mean like you were a really nice kid. You could see where, where you were at. Like I, I was as I was a nice kid, but I was also a dumb shit too at the same time. You oh. know what I'm saying? Like I was I feel like you were like uh I feel like girls' parents uh, like would you're, love you're homely. Girls' parents would love to see you right. walk you're with da- walk, oh, yeah. walk yeah, in yeah. with their daughter. Oh yeah, that's because that's always been true. They would yeah. yeah. He look, just, look at Justin right here. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Which yeah. one? No, that's always been true. I've always parents have always loved me. But you know, I was I But was, you can tell so the way you can tell is by the way, you know, all these you know, and some of it, obviously some of the pe- all the writing that is in yours. Half of it looks like you wrote your, yourself, so it looks like you had more friends. Yeah, yeah, right? so, yeah. So, so, so. Hey, Sal. <laughs> hey, Sal. Hey, Sal. Sal, keep going, man. Yeah, you know, you're, yeah. so, you're, you're, so you're the smartest dude with the yeah. biggest dick I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Next year, I'm going for chess class. I'm really miss not seeing you <laughs> next anymore. Next summer. <laughs> next K- summer. K-I-T. Keep in touch. Yeah. Page yeah. me. <laughs> oh, JK. JK. I, I signed them all this morning. Yeah. Like, fuck, we got to bring these to work. I know. <laughs> I have there no was no signatures. LOLs back yeah. then. We yeah. were just talking about yeah. this. It's I'm all so, like JKs. I'm so I hope you start that mind pump idea you came with, and I'll show you guys. <laughs> yeah. See, I fucking came up with like idea. foreshadowing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told you guys. I feel like you're gonna do big things with a big MP. I don't know yeah. what that means. How, how many people in mind though? I forgot about this. Like a lot of people are talking about me working out. Yeah, like, no, write me a yeah. workout, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, so that's what I mean by okay. I pictured you from the way you described the way you were as a kid, like this young kid by 15 years old already hit. So that's freshman year, dude. For, so you're all your high school career, you were obviously into lifting weights. Oh yeah, that was yeah. what I was known for. Right, yeah. which is I didn't do any of that during yeah, that yeah. time. It wasn't until my senior year, like that summer, did I really start lifting in my buddy's garage. It's funny though, like so if I'm looking through some of the girls' comments, you know, in your yearbooks and stuff, it's pretty funny because like it is accurate. They're they're like. You know, oh, you're sweet, you're funny, blah, blah. blah. Occasionally be like, you're sexy, but, you know, you need to put out more. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, put out more. Is that what they were saying? Yeah, one of them said that. Uh, it was pretty funny. <laughs> That's so. Uh, they, they were, a, you're holding out on that. It was, dude. I was a virgin, bro. I was a virgin until I was 20, man. Bro, I, I'm cracking. It wasn't because, like, I couldn't get any ass. You know what I'm saying? I, was, yeah. I, had a, I signed a purity card as a kid. You know, I would plan to, I was waiting until I was married at that, at that age. That's what I think I'm going to do. That's yeah. terrible. Crazy. You know what's you know what's <laughs> funny scarcity. is I'm looking through some of these pictures and remembering the styles of the late '90s, looking at the hair. And oh yeah. Dude. How about yeah. Justin to the picture? Yeah. It looks exactly the same. Justin? Yeah, dude. What Justin? do you mean? Hat backwards, flannel, and the, the shirt. Oh the- yeah, the, that was dude. And then what's crazy is that picture that I posted on my Instagram was from junior high, so it was like even further back. <laughs> I was great. like, wow, this is like. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that. Yeah. I was like, have I not changed? <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, uh, your friends are funny, Justin. Oh, you, you, they you, call you names. I can't even read yours. I know. They are. They're very explicit. And um, like, hey, what, you fucking you asshole. Fucking asshole. Yeah. Hey, you know, MF or you know. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You even had a, you even have a guy in here that referenced you getting their back. It sounds like they got you got their back in a fight. Oh yeah, and, that was the other they, thing. They made, a, they made a comment uh, yeah. like if if you were you know if I were to call anybody like I would I would call you to get my back. Yeah, which we've a, talked about before. Yeah, so. there was a couple times that yeah. happened where you know some kid was getting picked on or whatever, and they come tell me, and then I I'd, I'd help them out. Yeah, yeah. You could, it was so, just a th- yeah, it was a thing. I, you know what it is? I so think, it's in the yearbook. So now I really it's believe real. It. Yeah, like before and that's I think, not my handwriting. Yeah. <laughs> you can read it. That was my handwriting. You'd be like, what the fuck is going Dude, on? Dude, Adam, I have to. Okay, so. I found one from one of your friends. I think he's Raven. But like at the end, he adds this little, like everything's normal. Like, hey, bro, we're going to hang out, you know, blah, blah, blah fucking wherever. And, the then, and then the, there's the PS. It says, if they tell you to blow, don't just act a little. It works. What? <laughs> what the fuck does that mean, dude? What, what does you, that even mean? I can't. Wow. I totally remember what wow. he's talking about. So that, okay, that's my senior year right there, right? So. Yeah. The year before we were at uh, we were at the senior prom, uh, both Raven and I, we were with, we with different people. Like Raven's a buddy of mine, and Raven was hilarious. He was a really smart guy. He was actually a stoner. He's a smoker. He actually uh, worked with me and for me for a while when I was in the cannabis space. Oh, okay. And he still does that. He owns a club over in the valley. Shout out to Raven. I know he listens to the show. He's also we also got good friends that we're all mm-hmm. we're all. But this is hilarious. So I'll never forget this because we were at the Double Tree was where the prom was being held. And Raven is, I'm, I'm coming in. I got, we're, we're like, there's four of us couples. We're walking in, and I see Raven has got the two cop, uh, cops that are on bikes cornered him 
in the room and they're and they're telling him to blow in this oh. to blow in a breathalyzer <laughs> and he was fucked up because I remember him doing shots with us earlier and he kept drinking I know he was out with his buddies like so he was wasted at prom and that's a big no no right like they cracked down on that at prom and so he it was the funniest thing ever and the cops were laughing too because of how funny he was being because they're like telling him he had to blow and he would pretend like he was blowing but, they, want but he would hold his breath right but, <laughs> <laughs> and the and the cops were just kept trying to get him dude. He's like, I'm trying. He was getting really mad. Throwing and, it off. Oh yes, back and That's forth. That's actually a smart strategy. Oh, it uh, totally worked. These guys ended up letting him off. And that was why he wrote that in the yearbook is that was the big joke was just don't blow, dude. If they ask you to blow, don't, don't blow. blow. Yeah. Act, that is act so like s- it, but don't blow. He's, uh, I bet, is he a successful dude now? Yes, now? He is. Yes, yes, he of is. course. That's a brilliant, that's that a smart, smart kid. No, he was very smart. That, Raven was a, um, you know, there. I don't know if your school had this, but we had the, the, we had the stoner kids, yep. and then we had the exception to the rule stoner kids, which were the, typically the ones I hung out with, and that's why Raven yeah. and I were friends. Was even though he was a stoner, he was a he was all he was in, uh, all advanced classes. He had four point oh. Dude, like, we got smart. Gotta, he was a smart guy. Do the yeah. same clicks exist today that used to exist? Of course, have do they to. really have do they? to? I don't know. We need to ask Enzo because he's the one in high school. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, in because okay, let's call the clicks out. Right, there were the stoners. Stoner. There was. Did you guys have like rockers, we like call, dudes that were into like heavy like metal goth and shit? Like, yeah. And rockers. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had a whole. There were the ravers. Did you guys have ravers? No. Nah, were they were we really? We didn't, we didn't have. What do ravers. we call them? Like, yeah, I think we call them ravers or disco. I don't yeah, remember. But we they had were more Marilyn, Marilyn Manson like oh, did, kids. I saw shit. a couple pictures yeah. in your yearbook. <laughs> yeah, no, we had kids that would wear the really big pants, and then they put their hair up, kind of funny, and they'd wear colorful lipstick, and they look like ravers from. Maybe you remember ravers from the nineties? Who would how they were dressed? No, and we shit. really didn't have that. In you high guys school. didn't have that? Yeah, because no, I mean, I'm. Really. You guys I, were on the cuts. Yeah, exactly. See, we're both for both. You guys had cowboys. Yeah, yeah. I bet cowboys. you guys had cowboys. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, we, we had, had one. We had one to be cowboys. Yeah. We had yeah. one. We had one dude who dressed like a cowboy, and he was get, he got relentlessly bullied for it. Dude. Like every fucking <laughs> poor guy. I've actually, been in, in, like, I've actually been in like uh, a real like cowboy fight where like the dude goes, let's get him. Like, you know, like literally, no. <laughs> like it literally started like that. You know? Did he pull out Wearing a, a cowboy hat. Did he pull out a lasso? Wow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hog tie it. <laughs> we, do know, we do know whose school was the most least funded maybe or gangster <laughs> just, just the zero look at this one bro I know look dude. at this one it, it is, is a little embarrassing it's like a third grader I don't know your yearbooks are like somebody drew a picture and yeah. then they made that the some kid in the art class like just decided I'm yeah. gonna laminate this it's like the picture of I gotta post a picture of this bro I know it's the ugliest it's like, fucking cougar no, I've ever seen I mean it's cool if a kid did it and brought it to me I'd be like oh, you're pretty, <laughs> that's pretty good you know, come on good. that one's okay though I can you tell know, you the practice. one over here it's like kind of embossed a that that one's bit. better. That yeah. one's a little bit better. I mean, we, yeah. apparently we what just did Adam try as like? hard. Why do you have a? You got a sleeve on yours. You got a really... lot going on. These are like these are like textbooks. You know, these yeah. are these are all like. Well, we were the only so even done. though I grew up in a small town that we only had one high school. So like you guys have like twenty something high schools around this area. Or well, how nearby. big was your class? Yeah. Was well, it our, big? our school was small too. Man. So you guys we, had a small class, very, right? very small. Yeah. Do you know how many students you had in the school? I don't remember how many hundred, but it wasn't that many. Oh, mine was huge, thousands. Oh, oh like yeah, mine's two thousand. Uh, we were yeah, huge. we were like eighteen hundred to two thousand students. So you had you had a good. Three- it looks like it too, because you could tell by the size of the yearbook. Like I think mine might be a little bit a little yeah. bigger because we had a pretty big high school. Yeah, we had so. a small high school, dude. Yeah, because you can tell they're kind of thinner, right? I oh, had I, my junior high, high. I didn't even realize well, it. That's I why it was so impressive. We kicked the shit out of everybody. You know, it was just like everybody had huge schools, and we were just like this tiny group and. It's interesting because most people that were in our area too would go to Santa Cruz. And so we were just like basically from Boulder Creek, you know, to Ben Loman and then Felton. That was like mm. our picking. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting. We got any talent, you know, from that small population. One of the biggest differences between the three of us, well, you both uh, not necessarily identify, but you really remember that era as uh, you remember that era. It was so. Not memorable for you. Just non. All my whole school career, yeah. all, all the school was like that for me. Like I, I had cousins and stuff, and that's those are the people I hung out with. Well, we I didn't like that. I didn't like. I didn't care for the academic side of school. Yeah. I didn't like that. I yeah. liked school. I like friends, and I was. What kind of grades did you guys get? Yeah. I was three. Yeah, three. I think. It, I was at three five, and then I went down to like three three. I think my senior year. Really? I think I ended up. I think with a three two average, but I went as low as like two eight one year. That was like my. I had a year where I fucked yeah, off. Chemistry. And, fucked and my, me. I got in a lot of trouble and grounded a lot and stuff yeah. like that. And so, 
the, but the rest of the years, I was three something. I, you always had to be to be an athlete. Well, at least my my parents said I had to have a three zero to play sports. Oh, really? Even though the school required a two zero, my parents required a three zero. Now here's the thing: sports. is it because you studied and worked really hard? Oh or something? No, 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 no. I memorized like right before the test. That was it. That was like my formula. God, what did that tell you about the state of? It was nothing. Like, is that hilarious? Learn, yeah, dude, I didn't learn anything. Oh, that's so bad. That's yeah, so I didn't enjoy it, but I enjoy I enjoyed the social aspect of school. See, school was a blast and memorable for me because I have all these crazy memories of. First of everything, first kiss, first experience with mm. a female, first sport ever playing, first real, real level of competition, first fight, first, yeah, you know, first party. First, I mean, there's so many firsts for me that happened. It was like proving ground in that in that in that era that 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 is forever memorable for me for those reasons. As far as school, like school itself, like I couldn't tell you my teachers' names. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I maybe have one or two that were really impactful. I, I have yeah. one that comes to mind. The one, and I think I've shared on the show before that was the English teacher that pushed me to go in advanced English, even though I knew grammatically I was terrible, but she she pushed the way I thought. And that really, that probably, you know, projected me to be, you know, uh, probably more of a deeper thinker than I would, would have thought I would have been if I had been held back yeah. normal English because of my grammar. Isn't that stuff. crazy, the impact a teacher can have on someone to the point where you're a grown man now, it's been 20 years since you've been in high school, but you remember that. Yeah. Teacher. Well, the crazy part is that it's taken me this long in my life to connect to how impactful it was. Mm. Because if you would have asked me that five years out of high school, I would not make that connection. Mm. Later on, of like learning more about myself, strengths, weaknesses, things that, and then going like, okay, well, where did that come from? Like, why why am I confident to speak my mind or do these things, but that I'm not afraid of making grammatical mistakes that I don't let that hold me back? Because that holds a lot of people back, and mm. I don't think like that because. Because of why? Well, where does that come from? And as I go deeper and deeper and deeper, I go, oh, shit, that's crazy. I distinctly remember not thinking I belonged in an advanced class, having literally having a conversation with the teacher saying like, and her asking me, like, do you think you want to do this? And me going like, no. I, don't I wonder think- how different it would have been for you if you were a kid today with spell check and how it checks if your grammar is, you know, how much different it would have been for you. Be interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you don't have to worry. Because I, I would assume kids today don't really worry yeah. about misspelling shit. I know. How how hard... I never misspell anything ever now because that shit corrects it for you. You know what I mean? Right. Except for the platforms where yeah. it doesn't. And then it, it, unless it corrects it, it puts it out of context. Like it's in a, like a different <laughs> yeah. word. You know, that's happened a few <laughs> that's times. That's the wrong your. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, this isn't what I wanted. Yeah, but, dude. Uh, that's... Um, that, that's pretty, for, I was... Early on, you know, early on, I was really into training. I was into fitness. I was into exercise. I was into lifting weights, and I was studying it like I do yeah. now. But I went out. Well, was a so kid. when you think about that, that's something too that it's it's more memorable than you think. Then that probably at, at that time in your life, that might have been the first thing that you ever truly have applied yourself to and and did for yourself, right? If you kind of skated through school too. Or you never really, really gave your heart, and that was probably the first thing that you probably mm-hmm. gave your heart to. And said, "Man, what if I actually apply myself to it?" And you did it for sure. Um, I already had that mentality where you know, if I had a problem or I had a situation, that I would work hard and figure it out. That was always my mentality. But resistance training or exercise, the thing I love most about it is it's such a clear black and white example of sacrifice and reward. Sacrifice and reward. Hard work, and this is what you get. You make a mistake, and this is what happens, and then you figure it out. And it's very black and white because, you know, life is complex. So many different things can influence how things turn out that sometimes it's hard to connect the dots. You tend to connect the dots backwards, right? You tend to look back and be like, oh, I can see what worked. And that's kind of the problem or the challenge with life. With exercise, it's, especially with weights, it was it's so black and white. Like, oh, I got stronger. That worked. Or, oh, I'm progressing. That worked. I'm working hard. I'm watching my diet. These are the things that are changing. And so it reinforced that within me and very early on 15 16 17 years old i was training people not professionally because i couldn't right you uh, you had to be 18 years old to get a uh, become a personal trainer at least at the gyms that i knew and so but at 16 17 i was writing workouts for people i was training people i was helping people out and i was studying you know how the body responds i would read these books on anatomy i would read books on chemistry so i could figure out the best supplements and, and how to take them. So right. when are you doing this? Obviously, you're not doing it at school. You're so in your pastime, you would be picking up books like this. I would get home from school, and if I was working out with my cousin, we'd work out together. If not, I would do it myself. Literally, right after school, I'd come home, and I would go in the backyard, and I would spend two 
two and a half hours uh, training and and then reading and you know learning shit. Or I'd go to the uh, then when I got a little older, I'd ride my bike to the YMCA and I'd go to the Y and I'd learn and study <laughs> and ask questions and read and do all this stuff. So it was in my it was in my spare time. Whenever I had time, I would do this and I would get every magazine. So I read Iron Man, Muscle Media, two thousand. I read Muscle Mag. I read, of course, Flex and Muscle and Fitness. And I mean, every muscle ba- magazine you could think of, I would get. And then I'd get all the books. So I get stuff by Mike Menzer, stuff by Arnold Schwarzenegger, stuff by, you know, Kennedy, by, you know, Vince Garanda. And I, I would buy these books and I'd go through them and I'd read them and study them. And I just found this passion for it. And that really helped me when I got into fitness as a career because when you first. You know, and I also, of course, I, I learned this from my family too. I have a very, my, my, both my parents are very hardworking. So I got work ethic from them and all that. But when I got my first job, like part of the reason why I was so confident and assertive is because I'd been studying this shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I, although looking back, I didn't know much compared to what I know now. Yeah, I knew way more than, you know, most kids going It's on. interesting to think back kind of like when I first actually like started teaching people like fitness and um, writing programs and, and just helping people out in that direction. And I can think back to when I was in college and I was going through this, this course, I think it was called ergogenic aids. And there was also like biomechanics, but what we did was a, a lab where it almost like, you know, the presidential physical fitness, like they had standards. There was like a standard for like sit and reach. There was a standard yeah, yeah for like body fat. And so I was like testing basically the entire campus and it was all under my, you know, this was my assignment, my project. And I just realized that, like, I, I don't know, I did really well with it, explaining, you know, what was going on and what to shoot for and all that stuff. And then, like, I, I found myself just randomly helping people when I was working out all the mm-hmm. time, dude, because I just lived in the gym, you know, trying to build myself up for football because I was getting the shit kicked out of me. <laughs> so, uh, and then, you know, that was like my angle. Uh, with girls all of a sudden I was like hey you know let me help you out and so I started helping them out like as they were in the gym because they didn't know what to do and they'd ask me questions what I was doing do you feel it here and I was like well this is such a powerful <laughs> so ironic you married powerful like, yeah, exactly. weapon that I have now <laughs> you know yeah yeah the irony of it is Dude, I, I married being a, girl. a young te- <clears throat> being a young personal trainer I mean I was 18 19 you know and then 20 I was managing gyms and all that that was such a, a, a like cool thing to tell a girl. Like a girl's like, "Hey, what do you do?" And you know, you're 19. You're talking to another 19 year old girl. Sure. Like, oh, I'm a personal trainer. It's like, whoa, well, dude. Yeah, you know, it sucks. Like, oh, you could help me. Yeah, exactly. Like, yes, I can. You know, it sucks. I was my first client or the first person that I ever tried to. You know, I wasn't even officially a personal trainer, but uh, the first person I ever trained was when I was 18, and at that time I was still <clears throat> I was still working at the dairy, and I had purchased a national certification because I was going to move. I had decided that I was going to move to the Bay area. And so I had already bought the certification. I was kind of reading through it over the summer and I had been working out for about a year and a half that at that time. And the guy, there was a guy that used to come and uh, deliver parts at the dairy. And I got to know him and he had a kid that was in high school and he asked me to train his son uh, for, for the remainder of that summer. And I trained his son for that summer I remember I was really mad that he didn't pay me, but what he did do, and I'm pissed that I don't still have this, is you know he had made me this really nice like uh, it was a white gold or you know or sterling silver or something. It was a nice money clip, and uh, it was custom and it had my name on it. And on the back, it had per- certified personal trainer, and it had the year. And I had it for a while, and I I was changing it, you know. Macy's or something way back when and it fucking slid mm. out of my pants and I never got it back ever again. And that, I think that would be a cool piece to have mm-hmm. right now. Considering, That's so awesome. Right, right. But that was my very, very first. I wasn't even a real personal trainer. I, was t- I don't fucking know what the hell I taught him. Do you guys I, know, right? I can barely remember what I taught <laughs> like the kid. Yeah. Do, do you guys I know the girl's name too. Is Kristen Polda. I was like, uh, who's that? I probably gave her like horrible advice. Oh, your first client? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. What's her yeah, name? Yeah. First name? Yeah. Kristen. Yeah. Hey, Kristen. Hey, Kristen. <laughs> Shout awesome. out. Yeah. She's got I only trained you because I thought you were hot. That was the only reason. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, do you guys remember the first time you, you stepped into something and you felt that feeling like this is what I'm supposed to be doing? You guys ever get that feeling? Oh, where yeah. like, mm-hmm. I know you guys are very passionate. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. That, that, this, was, this was like that. Oh, yeah. the, oh, what we're doing now? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. For, you know what's funny? What, you know what it is? And I don't know if you guys can relate to the same feeling or not, but it's like this. Um, I'm, I'm uncomfortable cause it's new. 
so I know it's I'm uncomfortable, um, but I'm very excited to learn, mm-hmm. you know, and and I I'm really enjoying the process. It's kind of like all those feelings wrapped into one when 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 you settle into something brand new like that and if it was right or and was, you can see things real time work and not work and so right. it's like it, it's exciting because when you hit strides it's it really like you're like wow this is happening i think yeah. it's an important thing that people learn to find that because it's so unique to every individual or if you do find it yes like pay attention right this and this goes back to the thing that i always echo which is the stop focusing on what you're not good at focus on what you're good at and be great at it. it's when you have these moments like if you have this natural passion already to feel fuel that feed that fire don't you know think you need to fit into a, a category or box or do what someone else told you no. you should do like i mean i i can clearly name a few times where and i, I remember it was very very distinct like <laughs> i mean growing up as a kid i wasn't shy definitely wasn't shy i had a certain level of I guess whatever you want to call it, confidence or charisma, but it wasn't. It was also combined with a feeling of a little bit of of that shyness or whatever. So, like if you put me in a large crowd or a big party, not really my scene. You have me talk with a few people, and then I'd kind of come into my element. So I had these little glimpses of, of of how I'd feel when I'd feel in my element, but I never really grasped onto it until I became a personal trainer. Be- when I first got into the gym. And that very first day when I got, you know, I sold all that training that first day and then the next day and then I was, all I felt like, holy shit, I belong here. Like I really belong doing this. And the next time I felt that was when I managed, uh, when I became a general manager, when I, so when I was a trainer and then when I became a general manager, I got that feeling again of like, oh fuck, this is, this is exactly what I'm supposed to do. I didn't get that feeling again for a long time. Even when I owned my wellness facility as much as I enjoyed it and like what I did, I never got that feeling of like, oh, this is this is what I'm supposed to be doing until the day that D- uh, Doug and I filmed video for Maps Anabolic. That I rem- I'll, I remember it the very first time Doug's like, "Okay, I want you to you know, we're going to make a video on this stuff and you're going to explain people to people how to do these exercises, you're going to talk to the camera." And he turned that camera on and I felt like I was totally like, oh, I remember telling him afterwards, I was like, oh shit, I feel like this is what I'm supposed to do. Like I feel, I have that feeling that I used to get when I first became a trainer and when I first managed gyms. <clears throat> and it's funny because each successive time I get that feeling, it feels more and more powerful and real. And I think it's because, and this is going to sound very esoteric, but I feel like I, uh, I'm being directed, right? Like I'm, get, oh, like I'm getting closer and closer. And the most I've ever felt it ever was, the first time we got on a podcast, the very first time, very first time we hit record. I, I mean, as bad as we were, as nervous as we were, because I can listen and I've done it. I've listened to the old episodes and I, I cringe, oh, but I God, also laugh. I was listening to that one on the you forum. You have? Yeah. Oh, someone yeah. on the forum just posted, did a, for our 800, someone did it as a, as a throwback. It can be hard to watch. It's very hard yeah. to watch. But too. it can also, I mean, it's also like, I remember what that felt like and it was like, you know, you didn't, I didn't have the experience. We didn't have the the, the talent, or that we were we were nervous. It didn't come across. We didn't feel nervous. Like I didn't feel scared, but I think all of us felt that excited nerves. You know, yeah. but I know all of us felt like this is exactly what we're supposed to do. That was the discussion after the first episode. Was like mm-hmm. this is what we're supposed to do, and I've never felt it like I feel it now. And when you feel that, if things um, things feel easy, and I don't mean that they are easy. They're hard and they're challenging. There's work. But it's like it flows. I don't know how to yeah. explain it. Can like you it think, just happens. Can you think of attributes that you had as a high schooler? You know, thinking back to right now, since we get the yearbooks out and everything like that, that are that have are playing a role now in your your role within the business right now. Hmm. Well, like, it's like it, it, that's feeding into the strengths of it. Like, well, for sure. If I mean, I, just saying the, what you're saying right now, obviously, because that's an important piece yeah. to what we do right now. Yeah. Oh, well, for sure. Um, this, ever since I was young, but definitely as I got older in high school, if I felt like somebody was uh, either being taken advantage of or didn't have a voice or couldn't have a voice or too scared to have a voice, if I felt like you know somebody needed help, I was very outspoken, very assertive, and fearless. I wasn't like that for myself. So something happened to me. I mean, if you if you really push me, definitely assertive. I'm not going to let people push me around. But if I saw that shit with someone else, yeah. I would speak up. Yeah. Or if there was something happening oh, yeah. in class, I was. Or if there was a debate or a discussion, I felt very passionate I, I about. I could echo that. For and sure. and so, I for sure, you know, through I mean, 
you know, our message and stuff we communicate, like if I communicate something, I feel it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I can see that from, you know, when I was a kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about you guys? What about you, Justin? I don't know. It's an interesting question. I think that growing up in, in high school, like I, I tried to consider as many people as possible. So I tried not to like stay so much within my clique. Uh, I definitely uh, moved around a lot and tried to um, spend time with 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 other people, you know, and other friends. And uh, I had like my core group, so I had like two of my friends that were like it was like the three of us always like doing stuff. But like at school, I was always kind of floating around, like talking to, to other people and getting their perspective. And uh, you know, like I was, I don't know, like it as much of I feel like I was an asshole. Like I, I was really like seeking out like where everybody was coming from and like trying to kind of uh empathize on some level like you know what what everybody was up to and stuff and um so i had a really like diverse group of of friends like like loose friends you know not Mm. like i had like only like two like real solid like like, core friends but um yeah i was like i i knew a lot of people um but i think like for me like i just i've always been super creative and if, if you get further in the, the yearbook, you can see how I vested that creativity where I was in like a talent show and I was like behind the scenes, like helping out with like the drama. Now, what, what when did you put that together? That was something that you liked or that you were good at? Was that in high school or was it even before high school? Um, So before high school, I I did a little bit of like putting myself out there as far as uh, performing. Like I, I did... Um, one time I did like this lip sync competition thing. And so, <laughs> <laughs> this is before it's I'm all. I'm so cool. glad I asked this question. This is like before it was all cool with like LL Cool J. You know, it's on TV now. Right, like, that's actually a funny, cool thing now, right? Right, like I'm like, oh, good. I wasn't like a, an insane dork for doing that. You know, I did feel kind of like, <laughs> like really silly. But uh, yeah, I did. Um, I, I think. I did. I did um, a Primus song, and then I did like, oh, my favorite one. This was on a stage in front of your yeah, school. yeah. See, yeah, I would have yeah. never done that. Yeah, and then never. I did one which was hilarious that I got away with this. I always tried to press the boundaries. Like I was like that asshole that would I would try and like make it make a joke, but getting trouble by doing the joke. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like I was kicked out of class a bunch of times for pulling a prank or something really funny that I thought like I was so fucking bored. Like I wanted to like cause havoc. You know, and so I, me and my friend, I pull my friend with me, and we would sit. Hundred percent, Justin and I would have hung out in high school outside, like, oh, sure. and we were just yeah. laugh about it the whole time. And I didn't learn shit because I was bored, you know. So like, so as far as like the performing thing goes, I had this one um, lip syncing song. It was uh, King Missile. Do you guys remember that song, Detachable Penis? Yes. Oh my god! I don't so that I fucking like they didn't know I was coming out with that song. And so you're I, singing detachable penis. Yeah, right? yeah, lip syncing detachable penis and like like going through like he's walking, you know, like like some days I take it off and then I'm like 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 miming the whole thing and putting it over <laughs> here and and like but you just see the 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 faces of the teachers were just like uh, like dumbfounded. How epic was it for all the students though? Oh, they're, they're dying. Yeah, oh, I bet. Yeah, they're I dying. bet that you crushed that there. Yeah, that was a good one. But like the rest of them I was like I remember I was I was like the white knight in. Uh, what do you think it was? Do you think you got the thrill of the response of the crowd? Like, what was it as a kid that yeah. was like, oh, this is fucking cool? I just liked, yeah, I liked the attention of like getting in trouble for really dumb reasons. You know, like I don't know, like I like I wasn't really like malicious about like I didn't want to like. Uh, you were just hurt, being, hurt anybody or like you know like you weren't mean you were a rascal yeah i was a ra- i was like yeah I was like, <laughs> yeah i was like that kid that just was like this is all stupid what are we doing you know like i don't know I, that's just how i've always been one thing i feel like we all have in common i don't think any of us could keep our mouth shut when we need to when we want to say something yeah, you know no, what i mean oh, absolutely i feel like all of us were like oh. i've always been a big mouth yeah. always yeah since yeah. day one yeah, teachers like that's the thing is like some teachers would would put up with it because sometimes it was funny, but then when it'd get annoying, they'd send me the principal. Yeah, you know? mm. so it was like there was like a well. What's unique too is everybody, everyone kind of paved their own way too, and we're very in, we're individuals in a time that it was it was not popular. Like in high school, you everybody wants to really fit in and, mm. and be a part of a clique, and something that we do all have in common, although how different we all were in school, is I too can say that that's you know. I was known for being one of the guys who I, I had friends in all the different 
categories that didn't other clicks that clicks didn't hang out like I because I connected with anybody that was in a class and in high school you go six periods where you know you, I'm with a different group of people or potentially every single period and so I had friends in every single class I didn't yeah. have only my friends that I had since you know middle school and then we only when we saw each other in class I had friends in every single class and if you sat around me I probably was your friend so I had and it didn't matter who you came from or what click you ran with and I think I, I I had that personality really early on. I think you guys had that too, even though maybe you, we tend to, I, you know, people would have probably identified us with someone else, but we were individuals like that, which is what makes part of this all really unique and actually work out too. It's like, you know, we have this ability to be uh, independent leaders, but then also uh, cohesive enough to be able to blend with each other and not like overstep each other. I think that's even trails all the way back to like when we share and talk about the high school stuff. Cause I think mm. about that, like, you know, it's, it's really tough to be doing what we do right now without personalities clashing, even yeah. being older guys, whatever like that, you would think that it would just be natural that eventually <laughs> we keep saying that shit. We're going to jinx ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Really? I think we get close. Fuck you guys! I, I think we, we, get, we press it. I think we get closer as we continue to go on. Well, you're, no, you're right. I think as we the, get to know each other even more. Well, here's the other thing, too, is, uh, I mean, we talk about shit. Like, there's a lot, you, you know, I think a big problem with a lot of people working yeah, together no, you're right. is that they don't talk about stuff. And so it builds up and you build yeah. resentment and yeah, then stuff nothing piles off. Is, 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 yeah, held, no, held. We talk about it on the podcast half uh. the time. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, dude, that's, uh, that's true. Wrong with and us. it really, I tell uh. you what, you want to dissipate pressure or you want to dissipate uh, tension. tension yeah. Just fucking talk about it. Now, you can't do this with people who don't want to talk about shit or don't know how to talk about stuff. Like, yeah. if you try to talk about something with someone and they just get all angry and emotional and ridiculous. You can't have a conversation. So then it becomes very difficult. Well, that's all the resentment comes from. Yeah. Yeah. You're just holding on to that. And then it just turns, it like builds into something a lot bigger than it should have been. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you guys remember like big evolutions in your way of thinking, you know, from as, as you were growing up until now, like where you just had these big shifts in the way you viewed things or looked at things. Do you remember any? any of oh, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I remember, you know, I just shared this, um, on the on was it on my oh on my Instagram so I did a quote uh, faith without work is dead and the reason why I posted that quote was that I was listening to Jay Prince's memoir and Jay Prince is kind of the guy behind Floyd Mayweather and Drake and I've never heard anybody else use that quote before and it's a quote that I used to use but the reason why I used to use it is kind of unique right I you know I forget the context that he was using it in but. I found that verse because I had this moment that you're talking about in my life because I grew up very religious. And one of the things that my, my mom used to always say to us is just, you know, we needed to to pray and have faith and believe, pray, have faith, believe, and God will provide, God will provide. Like that was a, a very common theme and message that was set at my house. But yet, you know, we found ourselves a lot of times having to move because we couldn't afford to be in this house or evicted or whatever, or struggling to get, you know, what's, you know, pay the bills and shit like that. And it just didn't make sense to me that, you know, God didn't want to put some of the responsibility on ourselves to go do all this stuff. Like we're just, he's, it's, everything's meant to be the way it's meant to be and to pray about it and let, let life unfold. And I'm just like, it didn't make sense to me right. if he gave us free will that we're not supposed to take action. Somehow. So I remember like digging into the Bible because that was the only way I could communicate with my mom because she would always throw that back in my face. If I would try to argue with my mom as a kid, she would throw back Bible verses. So I knew if I was going to bring a, a good debate or debate something, I'd have to find it in the Bible. Right. And that verse comes from the Bible, faith without work is dead. Mm -hmm. And at a young age, which is around high school time, I believe is when I'm, I'm reading this, I remember reading that and going like, I knew it. I knew that that they, he doesn't he didn't believe that we weren't supposed to do anything about it. There's more to it than just believing. You actually have to take action, and that's what that verse was all well, about. That's, context. That's where that's what believing is. Believing literally is taking action doing. and doing what's meaningful. Yeah, right. Because otherwise, why would you do anything? 
Why would you do anything that's meaningful? Because meaningful stuff is fucking hard. It's not expedient. It's not great. Yeah, but right you'd now. be surprised how many people believe that the you know that that come from the place of everything is, has a, a plan and a, a meant to be, and that I'm just going to pray about it and it will. And they're sort of just going with the whim and the momentum's going right, to carry versus them there. believing that they actually have free will and they have control of their life. Sure, and because there's a lot of people that mistake that they think that's an insult because God is in control, you're not in control. So for you to say that you're taking control of your actions. Mm-hmm. Would be going against that, right? So then, instead, I if, yeah, no, that's I, I feel like that's the wrong way to look at right. it. Right. So this it was a very it's I, I would see that. I was raised this way. Yeah, yeah I can you know, see that. so all the way up and in, in high school was when I really started to to question it. And I wanted because I wanted more for my life. Now, when you found that and that shifted oh. for you, oh, and then you were on fire. Switched it on. It wow. turned it turned me on into the the beast that I am today when it comes to my work ethic mm. because I just put that that moment I I figured like no, nah. and I remember too like I remember it. The harder I worked, the more it served me too, and the happier I was. And I'm just like, that doesn't see this doesn't make this doesn't make sense to me because my my parents made me feel like it was that we were to pray, hope, you know, and believe that it would happen. And if we believe strong enough, if we had enough faith, it would be provided for us mm-hmm. versus taking the action. And once I kind of disproved that for myself, which you know that was that verse and why I'm expanding on this. Is that was a big time for me. That was a big reading that I came across. That forever shifted my paradigm, and I now went on this like, uh, uh-uh, I'm not believing that anymore. Like I'm taking action, and that was when I started working. I started working every chance I could. If I had free time, if I wasn't playing sports or with my buddies, I was working making money. I wasn't fucking around mm-hmm. doing anything else. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't yeah. have, which is probably why I was also a good kid in high school. I didn't have time for drugs. Yeah. And sure, I did the occasional, like, you know, getting drunk and partying after football games and when I was a junior and senior. But for the most part, I was I was already ambitious and wanting to make money because we didn't have things. I can, I can identify with that a lot. I mean, that exact story just because, like, even just going through that same sort of environment where it was, it was definitely, you know, my dad came back from Vietnam and, and I understand why he, he, he's like so grips on tightly to, um, faith and, and, you know, his belief system and, and praying and like, that's going to carry him through because like that was real, you know, like he had to have that mentality to make it, you know, through that environment. And, but that's what he was trying to instill in the same thing, like in the process with us and like, you know, and I think too, I, I, but very hard worker. And he was like, you know, like top of the sales and like Mm -hmm. everything he did. Um, but that wasn't stressed as much as like the, the, the release of like, you know, the humbleness that you need to, uh, come forward with versus like, you know, being, being out there and, and going and getting it. Um, but I, I definitely gravitated more towards, I want to work, you know, I want to get my own, I'm going to pave my own path. I want to figure mm-hmm. this out for myself. And I always felt, I always felt like I was, I was, you know, going against what, what I was taught yeah. by doing that. And like my brother, well, this is what led to me getting arrested. So, yeah. So this led to me getting a, a, my parents calling the cops on me and then them taking my car away. Because once that, that, that mindset went went for me at 15, like I was on the hustle from then on out, like working as much as I possibly could. And I had like, you know, we lived on the other side of the tracks and you, but you, and you would come in our air, neighborhood, not a very nice neighborhood, but then you come in my bedroom. My bedroom was nice because I you had money because I had money because yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I had, I bought my own quilt, my own pillows, my own TV that was in there. Like oh, wow. anything that was in my stereo system that, mm-hmm. that was, I paid for everything. So my room looked as cool as a high schooler's room could look. Right. So, you know, that was, that was me because of that moment. And I, I went off like that and I don't know why I was just, I interrupted you, Justin, but I was wanting to tell you, so you triggered me on something you just said mm. about, about your dad. I think that you, you, we, you're two, there's two types of people that uh, emerge from that kind of environment. One is, I do all the things I'm told because oh, I'm, the arrested yeah. story. That's yeah, you're gonna tell us. In a yeah, 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 that's what I was gonna tell yeah, you. People save it, please. Yeah. <laughs> uh, people, you know, will, will do what they're told or what they're supposed to do because they're afraid of the consequences. So I'm just gonna do this rigid thing. And then you have people that will visit the other side to examine. What should they? Do I want to? And I think that's what you guys yeah. are talking about. I'm the yeah. same way. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I'm the same way. If you look at my if I examine my my own spiritual development or my spiritual belief, it for sure swang in very extreme directions because I'm learning as much as I possibly can. I'm examining, I'm reading and and, and seeing how things feel. Mm-hmm. But it's funny how it's funny how now now at my my age now I'm starting to realize the importance of 
these when I used to see, you know, you'd see this cliche all the time, right? You'd see this all the time, like mind, body, spirit. Mind, body, spirit, total health and wellness. Like, what the fuck does that mean? My, it's just mind and body. What do you mean by spirit? Like, what is that? To, but I'm starting to understand that. Like, I'm starting to understand what that means mm-hmm. now at my age now. But right. it took yeah. me, it took me to go in the opposite direction oh, for I, a while. Absolutely. And I think that like my whole process was trying to just define my own faith and like my own ideas and my own like opinions. And I just, it took me a long time to do that, you know, cause I felt like I was always trying to please, you know, my parents are like trying to, um, you know, do things in a direction that I thought that, you know, that was going to, that's what everybody like almost expected of me. And so that's where I ended up really making it my own ambitious idea to graduate from college because everybody like pretty much dismissed me from going for some reason. So that was like a trigger for me, Mm -hmm. you know? And like I, me going through that process was everything because not only did I know that I could set myself towards something and accomplish it uh, at a high level, but uh, my own opinions and, and time away from all my friends and starting completely over and developing um, and understanding who I was as a person and like what I believe in and everything was like, that was super impactful. Mm. So, so much of that happened in high school, man. Yeah. So I want to hear about your arrest. Your oh, so yeah, that just, so what that set me on was this, you know, that was my way of rebelling. So I wasn't the kid that was doing Now, why it. did you get arrested? You were you guys fighting? Or yeah, something? yeah, no, I'll explain okay. that. So, you know, my way of rebelling in my family was to like, you know, I'm no longer listening to my parents in this, like, sit around and just pray for it. I'm going to go take action and, and make things happen. And so I I think that was, as a young little spitfire teenager, you know, I was constantly working hard and buying things for myself and doing things for myself. And I remember that when I was 16 years old, I remember my, my parents grounded me from uh, the car, which we had a car that was like a hand-me-down. It was a beater that everyone ended up using. And it was my transportation, which I was totally excited to have. But the only problem was it was another thing that my parents could hold over my head. So if I didn't, you know, do something right or I didn't do a chore or I talked back or whatever, you know, you would do, my parents would ground that from me. Mm-hmm. And when they would ground it from me, they would actually take it to where I couldn't use it to go to work either. Well, I worked at 3.30 in the morning at the dairy before school or at 4 o'clock in the afternoon after school uh, during the week. And I, it was seven miles away where I had to go. So they would take that away from me. So And that's that's obviously, I mean, as a smart kid, you're like, well, that doesn't make any fucking yeah, sense. This right. is my responsibility. Of course. And and the way I take that as a kid, knowing that I'm telling you right now that I'm the kid that starts, that's the way I'm rebelling. Yeah. And so that's, a, and a, what a what an awful way to punish me, you know, but to, to just to make your point, right? That mm, it's like, mm-hmm. you're grounded for not- I bet be- you were a mirror to them. You're probably reflecting yeah. to them what they weren't. 100%. You know what I mean? For sure. Absolutely. So that, and I, and I, I see all this as a kid, like I, I, I put this all together. And so I started, I, I would ride my bike, dude. If I got grounded at four o'clock in the morning, I'd fucking pedal my ass to work. I'd have to get up an extra half hour early so I could be there on time. And, you know, and I remember crying and shit on the way there, like angry, mm-hmm. but I was responsible. I didn't go stay on bed. Oh, because my parents wouldn't let, like, I fucking got to work. I did my job still crying and like a baby the whole way there and shit <laughs> like that, like angry at my life, hoping I'll get out of this thing one day. Right. But, you know, it, it, it taught me a lot and it changed who I was for the, the rest of my life. And when I came home one time or when I, they took the car from me one time, my chain breaks on the way to the dairy at four o'clock in the morning. Right. And i fucking, I break down at that point. I call my girlfriend's mom. She comes and picks me up and I'm like, I got to do something now. And I had saved up a thousand dollars at this time. And I, and I call my grandma up because at this point I'm, I'm only what, 16 years old. I don't have any credit to me, but I have a thousand dollars that I've saved up. And I ask her if she'll co-sign for me. And I wanted to go get like a little Ford Ranger old, you know, older pickup with miles on it. So they had like 10 grand, put a thousand dollars down and have a payment. I have a consistent job. Mm-hmm. And so my grandma and I told my grandmother what happened. My mom had and my grandmother was had work ethic was totally different than my mom. So when she found out, she was pissed. And she's like, I'm coming down there tomorrow and we're going to go take you to get a car. And I was like, cool. And of course, teenage boy, mm-hmm. right? I'm like, fuck yeah, grandma. Grandma saves the day. So grandma comes down. We go to go shopping. And my grandmother's like, you're not going to get some used car that's going to break down and you're going to have to fix and do all this stuff like that. I'm going to take you to get a new car. And my grandma went and took me and bought me a new car. Oh, wow. wow. And yeah. I drove it home. And when I drove it home, my parents said, I can't have it. And I was like, 
you got to be kidding me, right? Like we had our, I mean, we did everything, signed paperwork. It was, I have the car, it's yeah. my car, right? I'm still, I already, before I even took it home, I took it to all my friends' houses. Like I was so excited to have this car. Mm. And when I walked through the door at my house with it, my mom looked at me and said, you take that car back. And I'm like, this is my car. It's in my name. I'm know? paying for it. Yeah, uh-huh. I'm, yeah, this is mine. And my mom's like, uh-uh. You take that car back. You either live here and you don't have that car or you live in your car. And I was like, that's an easy decision. I'll live in my car. <laughs> yeah. So I went and packed my bags and I took off and I left and I was fucking living with a friend for like a week. Right. And I hadn't seen my parents. I'm fucking out. Like they gave me the green light to be out. I'm out. And I'm sure I would love to hear my mom tell this story one day on her side, what it was like, like if they're going like, fuck, what do we do? Is he really going to take off for her? Cause <laughs> yeah. I was out. That's in my oh, mind. Yeah. So I must have freaked him out. Right. A week later, I got to eventually re up on clothes. So I come back right in the afternoon time to come pick up another bag of clothes. And I walk in like straight beelined it for my room, packing a bag and I'm walking right back out. I'm never coming back. That's the way I'm thinking. And my stepfather steps in front of the, the, the doorway and he won't get out of the way. And my mom goes straight for the phone. I'm like, Hey, I'm out of here. And they're like, no, you're not. You're staying right here. And they, she gets on the phone right, right away. She calls the cops and nothing's even happened yet. So my mom calls the cops and then I'm like, I'm out of here. And I try to walk by him. And then my stepfather gets in my way and then grabs me. And then him and I are wrestling and fighting on the ground, stuff like that. I'm headbutting him and shit. Oh, shit. Yeah. So we're getting into it. But he's, I mean, he's massive compared to me at this. I'm a yeah. little 140 pound kid, right? So he manhandles me and he holds me down until, you know, fucking four cop cars roll up. Because I live in a small town. So something happens. Every cop car shows up to this one house, right? In San Jose, we didn't give a fuck about this. Cop car rolls up, cops come in. They come in the living room and the cop right away just starts laying into me, chastising me. We deal with little punks like you all the time, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, because now he's like, this is my job. I'm going to teach this kid a lesson. Totally. So he is just laying into me and I'm just, I'm crying, right? I'm bawling my eyes out, sitting on the couch, cop standing over me saying like this. And I look up at him and I said, you don't even know me. And he looked back at me and he stands your ass up, boy. Tells me to stand up, turns me around, cuffs me, takes me to the, takes me to the police car Sits me in the back of the police car, sitting in my neighborhood with all my neighbors and people that are around me in the back of a cop car for like two hours, <laughs> right? And he's in there while he's talking to my parents. Then he comes out and then he drives me down to the police station. I go down to the police station, talks to me in the car again for another two hours more. And this is where I find out I have no, as a 16 year old boy, yeah, I have no rights. No rights. Yeah, no. He's like, all that. And I, I'm telling him, you don't know my family. You don't know. I'm like crying about my family, right? Poor me type of deal, right? That shit to this guy. You have no idea who you're talking to, right? Like, I'm a nice kid. I don't do drugs. I don't do this stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Everything in my room is mine. They can't take that's mine. He's like, nah, everything that you think is yours is theirs. It is not yours. They can yeah. light it on fire. They can sell it tomorrow. And you can't do shit about it till you're 18 years old. And I was like, fuck, dude. Yeah. And so that's what happened, man. The guy, he didn't arrest me or anything like that. There's no, they had nothing to get me on. I don't know that though. You're a 16 year old boy. Cops get you like. Now when that's all done and said and done, were you thinking to yourself like, okay, I'm still running I can't wait till I'm 18 <laughs> and then you guys are never going to. So I told my parents and I stuck to this for a long time. Actually, I was done speaking to them. I was like, I, I literally, I literally said like. We're no longer talking. Silent treatment oh, dude, starting now. They took the, they sent the car up to my, my grandmother had to take the car back to San Jose. So the brand new car gets parked in the garage. I don't have the car. I'm, I'm living back there. I'm told I have no rights. They took my car, had me arrested, did all this stuff like that. And so I was like, okay, you can force me to live here till I'm 18 years old and you'll never see me again after that. And I told him that and I said, I'm not, sp-. and for dinners, bro, I just sit there fucking just <laughs> mad, great. bro. It took like six months before I finally broke down. And then all of a sudden, like when I got to my last six months before I graduated high school and they knew I was leaving, right? Then all of a sudden they got cool. They all of a sudden let let go. When I think when they realized when I really was going to be gone in six months, they only had six months left with me. They became the loosest parents and started to give me my freedom. And that because of that, that was probably the smartest thing that my parents ever did because I was on this like I really mm-hmm. had that. that that's much. Uh, that's uh, that's got to be a tough situation to be in to be a kid fight with your parents like that and to know that you're the one that's right. Yeah. That's got to be a very strange situation because look all all kids fight with their parents especially teenagers Mm -hmm. but at some point you know as a kid you're like well you know yeah i was being kind of yeah shit yeah or it's like they're not it's not fair but it's not really not that fair right 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 but something like that you got to be sitting there like racking your brain like am i in the fucking twilight zone do wrong what the fuck's going on i'm actually doing everything i'm supposed to this i feel like i'm in the fucking another dimension well it really made me question a lot of the morals and things that my family had lived by for a long time 
And so I went through this phase where I went from being like, you know, hardcore kid and all the uh, religious kid and in, in church three times a week to really questioning it, questioning it and wondering like, you know, this can't be, this can't be a good book. This can't mm-hmm. be right. You know what I'm saying? And so then I kind of questioned it and, and then it came kind of full circle later on where I realized like it was less of the, the message and more of the people receiving the message. I just didn't have very mature parents at that at that point you it's know an understandable way to 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 decipher it 100 percent. because i mean what better way to judge something other than the thing itself by the people who represent it right so mm-hmm. that's a very just i mean understandable you completely understand how a kid could do that right for sure right yeah. that's that's so that was a that was a very frustrating confusing time for me like i'm reading something and i'm interpreting it one way they are another they're my parents i'm wrong like the only way i could argue with my mom was if i threw other bible verses at her so you know like <laughs> it was with the best training proverbs it was, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was one of the best training grounds that i ever got for that six nine so i mean i appreciate a lot i mean much of it too so as much as i i harp on all that stuff you know talking about this was these were also some of the the I was reading the Bible at the deepest time during high school for sure. Cause I was even teaching it at that age, at that point in my life. And so much of my morals and that foundation comes from that. Mm. And I was creating my own identity with it at that point in my life too. So, so would you I, say you had that, the things that you learned and then you saw th- ways to not be? Mm. Yeah. And I, and I realized that the book itself wasn't the answer as much it was how what you took from it and how you applied it because my parents were an example of how I didn't want to use it or apply it mm-hmm. and but yeah and at first I was dismissive mm-hmm. of the book like many people are because of things like that which I can see and I mm-hmm. understand I have empathy for people who look at it like that I'm like that's because it's been interpreted it can feel oppressive right like you could use it like that and 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 really like misinterpret you know, the, the entire message just by sort of like taking and paraphrasing, you know, certain passages to, to, to sort of fit it's, this it's, like narrative you have. It's taught by insecure yeah. people all over the, the world. Same thing that's happened with like all the media, like, like anything on the news, like you just get all these little snippets of, of ideas and, and it's not like, like, it's just, it, it, it never works out. Like you, you got to know the backstory. You got to know like what the entire overarching message is and then where you fit into that. And- well, it's like anything else. I mean, it's, it's even like fitness. Like I could, I could definitely look at a representative who lifts weights a lot and works out and not know anything about exercise, not know anything about health and say, Oh, I'm not going to fucking lift weights. Look at that guy over there. Look at that girl over there. Right. Yeah. Look how dysfunctional they are. Look how unhealthy they are. Look at, the problem that guy hurt his back and in, in fucking really bad doing squats. I'm not doing squats. Right. Squats are bad squats for your back. Equal bad now. Forever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, it's, that's how the human brain sort of categorizes it because we try and simplify it. Shortcuts. It is. It is. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, I went through that process with. with I mean, my family. I mean, early because, you know, at 19, 18, I was training. 19, I was managing, and there was a a point where I had to decide: was I going to go to college? Or was I going to pursue this career in fitness? And I remember sitting down with my parents, and I, I sat down. And now my, my family remember they, they're they're poor. They were poor immigrants. My mom came here when she was four, but her her dad and, and my grandparents were immigrants and very poor. My dad was very poor growing up. He came here when he was nineteen. Neither one of them had any schooling past high school. At least my mom went to high school. My dad went up to uh, fourth grade. That's the furthest he went in school because he had to work. They couldn't afford anything. So. Talking about education, my parents was very interesting in, in the sense that neither one of them had gone far in school, so it wasn't like they valued it like people who went to college, but at the same time, they valued hard work and they knew that that was a good path. So I remember sitting down with them, and here I am. I've been, you know, now I've been working in gyms for about a year, and I'm loving it, and I'm I'm off at work all the time. I must have been there 16 hours a day at least, literally. And I sit down with them, and I'm like, hey, I, I think uh, I want to do this, and I don't want to go to school. I don't think I want to go to school because at the time I wanted to go to school, be a physical therapist. Mm-hmm. And my parents my, kind of looked at me. And the thing is, I had already proven to my parents that whatever I put my mind to, I would accomplish. So that was in my, that worked in my, my, my favor. Like I think my parents believed in me as a person, not necessarily in what I was doing, but more in as a, like, okay, well, if Sal says he's going to do this, yeah. Then we can trust. We've seen this play out before. We can trust he's not going to fuck around. Like right. he's he's serious about it. So that was kind of in my favor. But we had this huge debate, you know, at dinner, and 
my mom was like, you know, you, you, you go to school, finish school, then you can always go back and work in the gym. I'm like, I don't want to. Like, this is what I want to do. I'm doing good or whatever. And I remember I pulled out my pay stub and I showed, I showed, I had a seven thousand dollar paycheck for two weeks. I had destroyed it one month and had all his commissions. Nice. And that's a lot of 1998, right? It's a right, shit ton then, of money. Yeah, you're, and I'm 19 years old. I'm balling. making, I'm making more than my parents. All right. Yeah. So I showed my parents the check and I remember my mom's looking at it. She shows my dad and they're both like, fuck, like my, my parents look at me and go, you're doing, you're making good money. I said, Interesting. I said, yeah, I'm doing really good. And so my parents said, well, we got it. We still need to talk more about this. So I went to work and at this point, I was moving into the sales side, so I was a, a weekend manager or senior sales counselor is what they call it. I did that for about a month. But my manager, who was my good friend and became one of my first mentors, Don, I had this conversation with him and I sat him down. I said, look, here's the deal. I said, you know, uh, I if my parents aren't cool with this, then I'm probably going to have to go to school because remember that, you know, my culture and my family is very much like you respect your, your parents. And I'm so I sat down, I talked to him, I said, but I'm having this discussion with him. So he says, can I come to dinner? <laughs> so I said, okay. So Don actually came to dinner. Oh, wow. And he sat my parents down. And, you know, the good, the cool thing about Don, my one of my first, again, my first mentors and now a good friend of mine, is Don is an extremely convincing individual. Actually, one of the hmm. best salespeople and communicators you'll ever meet. If you sit down and hear him talk, and we met with him, you know, he's, yeah. he's just, poof, oh, yeah. he's and you, fire. he's compelling, right? So he sat down and he closed my parents. He actually sat down with my parents and That's told so them great. why I need to take the next two years. What he said, give him two years and watch what he can do. And here's what can happen. Here's the opportunities. And he, he brought some graphs and actually showed my parents. And my parents gave me, gave me their blessing. They're like, okay, go ahead and do this thing and, and, and see what happens. And, and that was it. But that was a very interesting well, you know, you, thing to bring someone home and have them talk to my parents no, about yeah. it, bro. That's hilarious. I've known coaches that have done that. You really? Know, to, to win over, yeah, to win over athletes, especially to sway them to get into certain schools and stuff. But yeah, that's great that he did that for you because I yeah. mean that's yeah, that's a big big deal. It is, and you know the the, the I, w- I we didn't go to we didn't we had certain customs and, and things in my culture that I I identified with strongly, but didn't understand why they were important. Just identified with this is who we are type of deal. And then as I got older, I thought they were ridiculous because they're just, oh, it's just a tradition. Like, what's the big deal? Who cares? Like, here's a good one, a good example. Like, like this is a big thing in my family. When you, when you show up at a, at a person's house, I don't care if there's 50 people, you go up to each individual person and you say hi to them. <laughs> you can't just say hi. <laughs> you have to kiss everybody. Like right in the face. Yeah, you got to kiss them, shake their hand, and make sure you go to the oh, the make sure you like go to plague. the the grandparents first. <laughs> yeah. Right? Make sure you go to the old people first. Like right. definitely say hi to your grandfather first. And if I didn't do this, we'd get in trouble mm. when I was a kid. Like you got to go say hi to your grandfather. And so I did it and identified with it. Yeah, this is what we do. And then as I got older, I was like, this is stupid. Who cares? I'm just going to wave everybody whatever. <laughs> but then as I got older, I started, started to appreciate the other side. Well, I started to appreciate that we make a big deal about how we enter yeah. into a situation and we show everybody, we acknowledge That's it. everybody. They feel that too. Like you you acknowledging them is, you know, something that they'll carry with them. Well, so, I started you know. I start realizing, you know, as I got older that that these customs and things exist because they're valuable. That's why they exist, but we forget why they were valuable because then there's such a there's such a custom that you just do it. Yeah. You forget why. Why does that exist? Like, here's another one. Like, when we sit down to have dinner, you don't eat until everybody sits down and everybody's right. ready to yeah, eat. Everybody has a plate. Ready. Everybody's yeah. ready to eat. And I always thought, who gives a shit? Just eat your food. It's not a big yeah. deal. Yeah, yeah. But no, it's because it, we're sharing something that's important together. You know, we're doing that thing that we're... Uh, respect is a very big thing in my culture, and then hard work is another. Well, imagine one. how p- pissed you would be if there's there's five of us in a tribe and we just got a big kill and we just ripped the meat off and it's all there and one dude's already digging in and I'm I've just got done cut, cutting it, cooking it, and I'm bringing it back to set it all down and you're already digging your face into something that yeah. I hunted for the last eight hours. Like, be pissed. I think there's like a respect thing that that that's all about too, right? There is, and, and <laughs> it's uh, like. And, and yeah. hard work is another one. Daddy gets the biggest piece yeah, yeah. <laughs> in my house. You know, hard work in, in, in for you know my family was a, a very big thing, but it's funny that nobody talked about it. Yeah. I never got lectured on it. Nobody ever sat me down and said, you need to work hard. You need to bust your ass. It was just, that's just the way we were. Like my, my dad worked seven days a week, 
most of my life. Why? Because he had the work. I remember, I remember one time I, I was kind of like, I, it never dawned on me that it was a lot, right? And uh, I mean, he would come home and have dinner, but you know, he would be up at, at work at 5 a.m. and he'd be come home at 4 p.m. And his work was, you know, difficult, you know, it's very manual labor type thing. And I remember as I got a little older, I'm like, well, that's a lot. Nobody does that. And I remember talking to my dad. I said, why do you, why do you work seven days a week? He's like, because there's work. And I remember, I remember like, like, well, that makes sense. Like, why would you turn it down? <laughs> like if, yeah, right. if it's there, you know, you might, you got to do it. But at the same time, he made time for the family. We made time to do things on the times when he didn't work. We would make sure to go have quality time together. And I remember that. And I remember having dinners every single night, but it was never, it was never really discussed. It was just, this is just, yeah, this is how it is. Yeah. And my mom was like that. My mom was never, and nobody ever complained yeah, that about mentality it. is, yeah, it's a lost, it's a lost art. It is. And also the other thing too, is, um, something that I learned that I didn't realize that I learned because nobody talked about it. It's just what you, what was expected or how we were. If you work or help someone, you never expect something in return. No, no. you don't expect yeah, anything in return. I never, I worked with my dad for a long time on the weekends and the way I understood it, was, and as I got older, I remember when I was like probably about 16. So at this point, like I'm actually helping him. I'm actually working. Cause when he brought me when I was eight, you know, I was just fucking around. I didn't really know what I was doing. But by the time I got to like 14, 15, 16, I could actually work and help him. And I remember at the end of job, sometimes he'd hand me cash and I'd be embarrassed. I'd be like, no, what are you doing? Be like, no, I don't want your money, dad. Like, and he'd, we'd have to fight over it. And then he'd force it. And sometimes he'd give it to my mom and say, give it to make sure you give this. And I'd fight with him to the point where my dad had a conversation with me. He's like, I'm going to pay you and you're going to take it. Otherwise, I'm not going to take you anymore. Right. So I was like, okay. Like that is a lost, that is a very lost thing, you know, with oh, with, for sure. with, with kids nowadays, you know, because <laughs> they expect something in return. Yes. And you see that a lot with like. Con- I expect to be manager by now. Dude. You know what I mean? Or you see that with contractors and people working for you. And it's like they show yeah. up and. The meeting they have with you about the job that they may have, they want to put down as a clocked hours and weird shit. And it's like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, yeah. I would have never done that in a million years. Yeah. It's an opportunity. I want to prove myself, you know, that, you know, what I'm doing is, or whatever. We just live in a different time it's, right now, it man. Is, yeah. Yeah. It is a different time. It's a very, very different time. I mean, there's a lot of hours I didn't get paid working in, in the gyms. That's are for you sure. Are kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've worked half, you know, like of non paid hours as I have, you know, paid. It just seems like there's just been so much of like learning that's had to happen to be able to actually get to a point where I feel like, yeah, what I'm doing like is valuable to where like, you know, I've, I've, I've gone and I've done all the the labor that brought me to this point. Do you remember, do you get, did you guys learn any like young, like money lessons like early on? Like my, the money lessons I learned served me and also fucked me uh, growing up because I learned from people who grew up very poor and also generations who yeah. were so poor in Sicily that food was an issue. So my lessons were don't spend money and save it. Mm-hmm. I never learned how to invest. I never learned how to buy investments. Yeah. And so I was a, I was a 19, you know, 20, 21 year old kid. So I was, this is, I've been working in gyms, 18, 19, 20, 21 years old. I had over a hundred thousand dollars in the bank I drove a fucking Volkswagen. I lived at home. Which is crazy for a 20-year-old boy to have that much money. In Cash. It. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. in the bank. Liquid. Yeah. Like, had I known to, because I was scared to, like, buy anything or, or invest mm-hmm. because there was always, like, what if the value goes down? So we were very much, like, save it. You know what I mean? Which served me well during the, re- the recession, I guess. Kind of saved me there. But, fuck, man. Had I invested that money as a kid? Right, right. Especially in the Bay Area? Right. Holy shit. Yeah. And, then the t- and then the money you do decide to spend, you spend it all on something that you were passionate and loved about, right? The one investment. That was the most that went into the gym, right? Yeah. Oh, my business. Yeah. Yeah. yeah when, I, when I did that, it was very much because I was just like, this is me working. This is what I'm going to do. But even then, I was a little bit like, I got flack from my, definitely from my parents. Yeah, I didn't learn any financial advice or planning or anything from my parents that was not like something that was transferred over to me other than I knew that by working I could get what I wanted. Do you know this That's is why I, I knew I love what you're doing with your your boys right now. That's I was telling Katrina this the other day like it was and I know I've I've already said this a couple times on the show. I I love you talking about it because I think the reason why I love hearing it is I wish I got that. You know, I wish that I understand. I, I that's like that's like your intro yeah, to economics for these kids. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like that's such a great way to give them a taste of that 
at an early age so then you can develop that as they get older so when they are in junior high high school they have a very good clear understanding of how this how household mm-hmm. operates yeah. how we pay the electric bill how do how does Dude, it work like, re- why is daddy gone a lot of the times like there's a reason why you know? I remember I had exactly. a I had a client I, I was probably I might have been 22 or 23 maybe a little older and I had a client that Told, like asked me like, hey man, how do you you know you bought this business? I'm like, where'd you get the money? This and that. I'm like, oh, I saved it and I left it in the bank. And he goes, you know, when you put money in the bank, you're losing money, right? And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? He explained to me inflation and why saving money was actually losing money. I had no idea. <laughs> it <laughs> blew like, no. my mind. He's yeah. like, ten dollars today is gonna buy less than ten dollars a year from now. So what you can't do is just save the money. You got to actually invest it so that it yeah. grows faster than the value drops. And I remember like sitting there, like I've been li- like I've been living a lie lied to my whole life. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> fucking blew me away. Who but was it, that? It was somebody, uh, one of my clients. Somebody, I, I don't uh, remember actually clients. who it was. To be honest yeah, with you, I just remember that that's lesson. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah, absolutely brilliant. Blew my mind. Early twenties when that happened. Yeah, early twenties. But I was conservative, which was good because it did save me during the the, the recession because the the mortgage I had on my house, I fixed at 30 years. And at that time, it was not popular to fix your loan. No, no. Everybody was doing these, yeah. f- you know, Negam five loans. arm. Or neg- yeah, like like you just you just go for it because you could just expect everything. Well, to everybody thought they would buy two, three houses. That's the path I was on. I was on this yeah. path where I was trying to buy a second and a third house. That was like, the hustle. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sure. I had family members who had at 1.4 houses who were not making that much money. Yeah. And I remember being like, how the fuck are they? And of course, now they have nothing. They lost everything. Right, right. So that part saved me a little bit, but it hurt me in the sense that I wasn't able to to learn how to how to grow up. No, I didn't get any lessons like as far from my other than to how not to. You know, what I'm saying like I started to put it together that you know we weren't super responsible with with finances. Like you know, as a kid, when you start, you've had enough nights where it's like oh we're at candlelight tonight we forgot to pay the pg and like you can only forget so many times yeah. where it's like okay we're, <laughs> we're probably can't afford it you know they always because somebody doesn't get paid till friday that's the reason why we don't have the lights on so i my lessons were all like that i wish i i wish i understood investing i wish i it's funny because it's some of the most valuable stuff that you could learn yeah as a kid that you don't you don't learn at all or even like built to build credit right so right. that's something that like a lot of parents don't talk to their kids especially teenagers too that i i, I was scared scared to do it like my parents made me feel like we we were in the position we were in because of credit cards like credit cards were evil, evil. yeah like yeah. they were evil and bad and like stay away from them like that was their fucking advice like okay like thank god for me i realized that like you know i had a lot of other bad advice they'd given me that so this might be bad advice too so i should look deeper in it myself and then i find out like i remember being a kid in my late teens and finding out that I needed four lines of credit to buy a house. Well, four lines of credit, how am I going to do that without a credit card? Like I have to get at least one or two credit cards plus a car loan. And like, there's no way I can buy a house if I don't do that first. So I began doing that. So I ended up buying, I was yeah. going to buy the, I bought a car and I was going to, I was going to finance it because I was like, ah, I don't want to pay the whole thing cash. And then the guy goes and he, he's like, takes my, you know, takes my driver's license and everything. And he, comes back and he's like, you don't have any credit. And I remember thinking like, what do you mean? He's like, do you have any credit cards? I'm like, no, yeah. never. I've never yeah. had a credit card. I had no, I had to pay cash for it because right. yeah. I had no credit. Th- that's crazy you mentioned because like, I remember it wasn't until I got married that I financed anything. Like that, I, everything I had was literally just like, I have money for this and this equates to this. Damn, you didn't get your first credit card till after you got married? Yeah. Holy shit, that's a, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, it was a debit card, but I never used it. Yeah, it no. Like a, yeah, I was like, I, I literally, because my parents said that and I was already on the mission of, you know, find out for myself, right? Mm-hmm. I, I went on the opposite. Like, so I used to have like this leather, I was collecting them. Like, how many, <laughs> how many, I literally had like 30 credit cards, dude. It was crazy, and they and I was like, my I turned it into a goal of like, how much can I get the limit up by paying them off, running running them up, paying them off, running them up, paying them off. So I just started to to create this big ass, but but I had fucking crazy. By the time I was twenty three years old, I had an eight hundred and something FICO score. I never missed a payment on anything. I had thirty different credit cards. Some of them were max limit at thirty fifty thousand dollars. Like. Yeah. That stuff, like, and it was never told well, to I me. I had loans to pay off, so I'm not like, you know, like that was a big deal. <laughs> I didn't need like credit card to add on to that. So, but that's stuff that you, you, I wish someone would have communicated that to me. Oh, yeah. As a kid, it, 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 economic. I it, totally wish all that. That's yeah. why I think that's why I'm really trying to tackle this, you know, as early as possible is like at least just the education. Yep. 
Yep. Yeah. Economic ignorance is one of the the biggest problems with uh, just in general. Just it in today. disempowers you. Well, right? adults don't know, don't understand how economics work yeah. because we've never really been taught. And when you take econ in high school, it's shit. Yeah. It is a terrible class. You don't learn anything. General principles. Yeah, right? like you, yeah. you should be taught in school. You should be taught. It's definitely the parents' job, right? Because this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. Teach your kids how to navigate credit, how to understand how loans work, how investments work, how money works. Teach them economics so that they can understand this stuff because you learn that when you're young. You don't have to make these mistakes as you get older. Yeah. Right. You just understand it. You figure it out. And you start when you're young. By the time you're in your mid-20s, you know, you're way ahead of the game. I mean, yeah. had I known what I know now, when I was 21 years old, living at my parents' house, oh, I had no bills. I know. Just had, you know, I was getting paid, you know, 120 grand a year. <laughs> as a man, I would have, fuck, I would have been, I would have been retired right I now. I bought everybody in my band's equipment. You know, I was, like, <laughs> I was really passionate about making it happen. Did you really? Yeah. You bought everybody's equipment? Yeah, I was making a lot of money as Did a Did they bartender. give it to you after you guys disbanded? Of course not, dude. They get to keep it? No, I mean, like, uh, well, yeah, I didn't, I didn't like, be like the tax man coming in and like grabbing everybody's <laughs> shit, you know. At that point, I just give let me back it go. my present. Yeah, I was doing it to like make the dream happen, you know. I was like, I didn't really look at it like, oh, well, you're gonna owe me this later, you know. But like, yeah, I mean, it'd be cool if they would have. Did I ever tell you money back? Did I ever tell you guys how I got fucked with the airline miles, the frequent flyer flyer no. things? No. I never told you guys no. that. Oh, so this is during this time of like me having all this pride of having like credit cards and having good credit and everything like that, and I was making good money. And this is also during my very insecure days of feeling the need to pay for everything and do everything for all my friends just to show them that I had money type of deal, right? And uh, I decided, let's go to Vegas, man. And I had just got a credit card just recently that finally get miles. Like someone finally said something to me like, you have all this credit and all these credit cards for that. Why aren't you getting points? And you pay them like- you get, you Light get bulb, bing. Yeah, right. So I got a Southwest credit card, right? So nice. I, and so I decide that I'm going to- um, Get, I built it up, right? So I'd been going up and down, paying it off till I had good credit with that. And I'd accumulated a bunch of miles. And the miles was, I can't remember what the number, exact number was, but it was a fuck ton of miles. It was like, you know, 500,000 miles or something ridiculous, something a lot. And so I was like, oh, dude, I, I have enough miles. I'll buy everyone's flights to Las Vegas. And the way you do it on those type of credit cards is you pay for it on the, use the credit card to buy the miles. Then you call in and they just, they subtract however many miles oh, you okay. have from the total. That's how that works. So you got to buy the, the you got to buy them first. You don't just get to call up and say, "Can you buy?" Oh, these I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. So that's how that works. So then, so I just go ahead and buy everyone's flights. Like seven dudes fucking round trips to 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 Vegas, and everyone's fucking pumped. Yeah, Adam's got us right type of deal. And I'm like, no big deal. I got this. You know, type of deal. Like it's <laughs> uh, no. yeah, uh, I got, uh, right. Uh, I get the yeah. points. Well, I find out later on that it's not mile to mile because I did it like this. Like, oh, how you got far? Five hundred thousand miles. <laughs> like, yes. literally. <laughs> yeah, but a hundred thousand miles equals like you know like one way to Reno. Yeah. You know. Uh, like, You're like, so, I could fly to the moon. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes, dude. That, but it's a total scam. That's how they get you. I know. And so I was somebody who got suckered like that where I ended up, so I ended up having to pay for fucking seven people's round trips. I mean, it was a couple thousand Shit, dollars dude. that I thought I wasn't going to have to pay for that I'd have miles. That I ended up eating all that. And that was, and I don't think I ever told my friends. I think I was so embarrassed about what an asshole. What so an, you just ate right. the that was just, bill. That's like a, a money. So the women me think this is a money lesson that I learned. Like yes. what an asshole I am doing something like that. That I just took on like a $2,500 credit card bill yeah. trying to be cool because I thought I had the that miles. One. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I've eaten a few things. Yeah. Like Talking about like, like spending money that you shouldn't have spent, man. By fu the fucking and this isn't because I got divorced either, by the way, because I could always look back and be like, anything I spent was a waste. But the engagement ring, dude, I got my my wife. That yeah. was a fucking uh, idiotic move. Yeah. Not because you shouldn't get a ring, but because I was managing gyms and never spent my money. I wanted to show, you know, like this is you know how so cool. you went you went in big. Bro, eighteen grand. I bought an eighteen thousand wow. dollar. Yeah, and oh, I was twenty. Wow. I was twenty one years old. Yeah, that's that's an impressive I, stone, bro. I went to Tiffany's because everybody said that's where you, the best uh, place to go. Yeah, of course. The, I walk the in brand there. Of it, right? Although yeah. I do have an embarrassing story from there. I walk in there and I'm looking at them. And I'm like, oh, I like this one. Yeah. And I tried to haggle <laughs> with, the, with the guy working there. Nice. Yeah, and I'm like, I'll take it. This is how this, this is my words. Exact my exact words. I said, I like this one. I'll take this for this price out the door. Yeah. <laughs> out the door right now out the door the guy looked at me like what do you mean out the door i'm like no tax this is the yeah. price yeah and he's like yeah we don't we don't really do that here he's like we don't mean he's like we don't even really run yeah, sales yeah. What's, he's like yeah i'm like listen i'll pay like, what I'll, are you doing here i'm like i'll pay cash right now cash right now 
but you have to do this price. He's like, sir, you're making me uncomfortable. Out the door. <laughs> and the guy looks at me, and he must have been like, who's this fucking kid? Because I'm a 21-year-old you know, baby-faced kid. Uh, and he's like, yeah, no, that's we don't we don't do anything. He's like, so I said, listen. All either, right, I'll, I'll call some friends. They're going to come down. They're going to buy something else. Yeah. Yeah? Like, what are we looking no, at? No, I'm all, take, I'm all, you got to take it or leave it. He's like, I'm sorry, man. I can't do anything. So I said, all right. So I turned around to walk out, and I was like walking slow. Expecting him to be, I was expecting him to be like, okay, okay, okay sir, so, sorry, sir, we'll take your money. You're like doing a little look back, like, yeah, huh? yeah. I took yeah. my time, anything, dude. Anything? I yeah. took my time. Walked all the way out the fucking front door. I turned the corner, and I'm sitting there with my arms crossed, and I'm like, motherfucker, he's not that's, budging. I'm like, that's the ring I want. I'm yeah. like, I gotta go back in there. <laughs> So I went back in there. Oh, you still bought it? I went back in there. Oh, I went God. back in there. And I'm oh, like, that is embarrassing. Because I wanted it. That's what I want. So I'm like, all right, dude. Here's all right, you son of a bitch. Spend so much money on a fucking rock. Wow. God damn it. Damn, I didn't know you spent yeah. that much. That's I a did. lot for a kid. Well, dude. I had a lot of money. It's a lot now, dude. It is a I, lot now. I yeah. had a lot of money. I worked. I didn't spend a lot of money. And I I, I don't know. I I, I think it a was little a by, statement. I'm yeah, pretty sure my ego stepped in for a second. Yeah, for you know what I mean? Yeah, they, I'm pretty sure bit. my ego was like, get the fucking <laughs> one. Bit. Everybody, yeah, everybody's going to see the girls boss. are going to talk about this one. Yeah, what a, what a <laughs> champion you are. Yeah. <laughs> Bling blango. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I been, it would have been just as cool. I could have spent like three grand and she would, everybody would have been happy. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah I could have taken the rest yeah. of the money and put it in a separate account for when I got divorced. <laughs> right. You know what I oh, mean? Save that one. Yeah. Uh, same with the wedding. Yeah, that whole thing is a big hustle, man. I'm oh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, if you go to mindpumpfree.com, we have guides that are free. That's why it's mindpumpfree.com. We have guides on working different body parts. We have guides on flattening your midsection. We have guides on high intensity interval training. All kinds of guides. All get them all, or get one of them. Doesn't matter. It's free. Mindpumpfree.com. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at MindPumpMedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes Maps Anabolic, Maps Performance, and Maps Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.